Khotan hears a who. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Nool, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joy, when Horton, the elephant, heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked towards the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person was calling for help. I'll help you, but who are you? Where? He could see nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why, I think that there must be something on top of that small speck. Some sort of creature, of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. So poor little person who's shaking with fear, he has no way to stare. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person no matter how small, so gently and using the greatest of care. The elephant stretches great trunk through the air and he lifted the dust speck and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Hmm. Huffed a voice, twas a sour kangaroo, and the you kangaroo in her paw said, Huff too, what that speck is so small, a person on that why there's never been. Believe me, says Horton, I'll tell you sincerely. I know there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four quite likely. A family for all we know, a family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton says, as a favour to me, try not to disturb them, just please let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo, and the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest fool in the jungle of Nool, and the kangaroo plunged into the cool pool with terrible splashing. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and hustled away. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, says Horton. He put his air near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped all us folk on the dust speck to no end. You've saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You've sailed all our churches and grocery stores. You mean, Horton gasped, you have buildings there too? Oh yes, piped the voice. We most certainly do. I know, called the voice, I'm too small to be seen, but I'm mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings to you would seem terribly small, but to us who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a Who, and we Whos are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town, you're safe now, don't worry, I won't let you down. Huh! Humped a voice, such carryings on in our peaceable jungle, we've had quite enough of your bellowing bungle. And I'm here to state that your silly nonsensical game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. With the help of the wicker sham, whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. And as for a dust speck, hmm, it'll boil, it'll boil in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it, gasped Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's full of persons. I'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you're really all there. So call a big meeting, get everyone out, make every who holler, make every who shout, make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in a bezel nut stew and down on the dust speck the scared little mayor quickly called a big meeting in town square and his people cried loudly they cried out in fear we are here we are here we are here we are here the elephant smile that was clear as a bell you kangaroos surely heard that very well i heard nothing Grab him, they shouted, and cage the big dope, lasso his stomach with ten miles of rope, tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose, then dunk that dumb speck in the bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigour and vim, but the Wickersham gang was too many for him. Don't give up, he cried to the mayor, I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small, and you very small persons will not have to die if you make yourselves heard, so come on now and try. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom, he started to smack it, and all over Whoville, they whooped up a racket. Great gusts of loud rackets rang through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky everywhere. Hey, Horton, how's this? cried the mayor. Is a sound coming through? I can hear you fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't quite as strong as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Quick, is there anyone shirking? 
Through the town rushed the mayor from east to west, but everyone seemed to be doing their best. Everyone seemed to be yapping and yipping, everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping. But it wasn't enough, all this ruckus and roar, he had to find someone to help make more. And just as he felt as he's getting nowhere, and about to despair, he burst through the door and he found the boy there, quite hidden away in apartment 12. A very small, very small shrieker named Jojo was standing and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a sound not a yip, not a chirp, and the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twin. And he climbed to the top of the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. For that time all who's who have blood that is red come to the age of their country. We've got to make noise in greater amounts, so open your mouth lad for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. When they got to the top, the lad cleared his throat and he shouted out, Yup! And that yup, that one small extra yup, Finally, at last, from the speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clean and clear, and the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? And their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do? From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too! The End <laughs>